Hey everyone, I am Mike, and with me as always is Corey. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going? And we are a retro pixel art game, uh, indie game dev studio called Bitbean Canon. And one of the two game projects we're working on right now is a classic 16-bit uh, arcade or console-style beat-em-up game, very similar to games like Streets of Rage 2 or Final Fight. And uh, it's one of our favorite genres, and we fairly recently discovered this cool game on Steam that's along the same lines, but much more modern, graphically, higher resolution, no real color limitations, um, and uh, 3D backgrounds, and I we think 3D pre-rendered characters. Uh, but anyway, yeah. we yeah we, we figured we'd uh, give it a uh, let's play through and um, chat about the game while we're playing it, talking about not only game play design elements, but also both of us are retro uh, pixel artists, so uh, we might make some commentary on some of the art and graphics along the way as well. All right, so without further ado, let's just dive right into it. We already quickly reviewed the moves, but neither of us have played this game much before, so it might take us a bit to really uh, remember and really put good use to all the moves. So can you join the game? There we go. Yep. So uh, I guess I'll be the generic Alex-like guy or Axel-like guy. Yep, I'll be the generic lady person. Yep. Yep. And overall, the uh, the quality of the graphics is quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally don't don't love this comic style. It's not that appealing. Like it's fairly distorted and. The faces aren't exactly pretty and stuff like that. But, it, uh, it, it's it's definitely considering that title screen and what the game looks like. It feels yeah. like a bit of a mismatch. Yeah, uh, out of place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I understand that these were probably an afterthought, and they mm. didn't want to spend maybe a lot of time on them. You know, because yeah. they knew they knew that this genre of game people might. They just want to skip, skip this it. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, I've got a mouse pointer over the screen for no reason. Let me get that off there. All right. Yeah. Oh, it's it's longer than I thought. I did always. But skip it. you know, in, like as far as the style, like the comic style, yeah. it's like in its own context, it's yeah. not bad. Like, right. You know, it it looks decent enough, but it's yeah. it's very strange when you see the <laughs> the game and you're like, yeah. wow, this is totally different looking. You know. Yeah. Um, Because the... you see, they, they actually have real, you know, 3D environments going yeah. on with this. Uh, it's pretty impressive, you know. Yeah, and overall they were definitely going with a uh, realistic or almost even hyper-real uh, style. Right, yeah. Though the uh, proportions are a little bit exaggerated with the, uh, which is typical, like the heads of the characters being smaller relative to the body than in real life. Yeah, uh, but I think it's especially overdone with the woman. Like, she has a little pea head on top of her very long-legged body. I think yeah, they went a little, a little too far with her. It's a little... Yeah, it feels a little small. Yeah. Still a very high-quality game, and the, um, uh, the the quality versus the price point is uh, pretty excellent. I'll have to double-check, but the, the price, even when, when it's not on sale, is quite low. And I'll, we should mention we are playing with the uh, Steam supported, I think it's called Let's Play Together mm -hmm. um, mode. And it, it uses an interesting technique where I'm basically streaming my screen to Corey, and the uh, Skype system is recording Scory's input and transferring it to the game. So the game registra registers it as the player to controller. Um, right. So it requires pretty fast internet, but Corey has uh, DSL, uh, the higher uh, grade DSL, and... Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, even with this, um, as long as there's not a lot of other bandwidth sort of things going on right. on my end, uh, it, it's, so far, it's, it's looking sharp, you know, like this is working very well. And playing responsibly, uh, and, that's good. Yeah, great. and we're able to do this without me owning the game. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. So we can play two player uh, with just Mike having purchased it. So yeah, that is a, a great uh, potential cross marketing thing too, because or not yes. cross marketing, but the fact that any of the games that support this feature, someone can play the game with a friend, and that friend might very well consider buying the game for themselves. 
exactly. so that they can do the same thing um, and invite others to uh, to play the game or just yeah, enjoy it on their own when the other person that owns it uh, is not around, not online. Exactly. I, I was never a huge fan of the idea of just streaming only games, you know, yeah. uh, if uh, sort of based on principle and the technology. Yeah. But this is one of those cases where the fact that I didn't have to purchase it myself is kind of like that. That's a, a better way of handling it. Yeah, it's very you cool. Know, uh, you know, because you still have the game. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, it's very, very neat way to market this feature. Yeah, and it, it brings it back. We just discovered that for ourselves. It didn't really say that. Yeah, game. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And let's see the uh, the other thing that's really cool about it is it's much more like when someone owns a game for a console. You know, classically back in the sixteen bit and even thirty two bit days, you could invite a friend over. They'd sit on their sofa on your sofa and play the game with you. And this is like the online version of that. I bought the game, but I can invite you to play the game with me, even though you're across exactly. the planet. Because so in that context, nice. that's the way it was. You just yeah. had the one, you know, the one game. CD, uh, right, of the game. Yeah, the game's pretty... Um, you know, I was never a huge fan back in the day of the pre-rendered style. Yeah, When it came to characters. But they did it, they handled it very well here. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the first time they did it really well was definitely, or at least that that gained huge recognition was Donkey Kong Country for the SNES. Mm -hmm. uh, there were other games before then that did it, but especially when it was like fighting games, to me, I just always much preferred the uh, hand drawn, smooth, more smoothly animated, uh, much much less stiff characters. That was one of the big problems back then, especially with the relatively low colors that 16-bit uh, consoles could do, not being hand-drawn, they were just relying on an algorithm to create a kind of muted, dithered out representation of the video footage of the human characters, the actors. Right. And back then that just really turned me off. I just thought, I thought it was a gimmick that sort of the technology or the workflow wasn't ready for it. Like if they had, started by doing that and sort of rotoscoped it and had really good artists sort of draw over the live actors and fix the color palettes to be more vibrant and less grainy and dithery and muted then it could have looked pretty good but the other big problem was there tends to be when you're just copying sort of sequential frame images from a real person especially back then there was no motion blur and no distortion between between frames, so that really added to the perceived stiffness of the animations. Yeah. So so what yeah. you're saying is that Pit Fighter is not a very good game. Doing that, it never appealed to me. <laughs> I, even like the original Mortal Kombat games. I know I'm in the minority there, so please everyone don't rage quit the uh, video. All right. But yeah, it just. No, I understand from a from yeah. a visual quality standpoint, especially it. Yeah. It, it that stuff looks so dated now. It's hard to yeah. reconcile it, you know, yeah. in modern times. This is a nice alternative to drawing. Yeah. Hand drawn frames, but yeah. doing it with some style. I think. Uh, they. Yeah, and, and they went for like a painterly kind of texturing style instead of hyper realistic with the characters' yeah. textures, and even the lighting. So it, it's a nice medium. It, it fits well in the more realistic 3d backgrounds but also doesn't feel uh you know they did they did mostly a good job there's slight stiffness in the characters compared to a really well done hand-drawn game but not bad at all like they made sure the uh especially the important keyframes were pretty dynamic looking yeah so definitely uh, not a bad job at all especially like i said for the price point of the game this this has the look of you know when they started making 3D brawlers and they, they kind of failed at it like yeah. stuff like uh, what was it called uh, Fighting Force and stuff. Yeah. This is where the genre should have went yeah. in that era and it yeah. didn't. They they tried to go full 3D when it wasn't ready. Yeah, for it. I, I agree. And uh, it kind of killed the street brawler to an extent at that point in time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they could have. Brawlers, yeah. Yeah, came, you know, came after that. Things like Dynasty Warriors, which is pretty fun, but it's a different type of game. Yeah. Uh, but 
you know, this in particular would have been nice to see back then. And it, no, I don't think anything like this hardly exists. Yeah. Or at least the people that tried it didn't do a very good job, you know? Um, yeah. There is, by the way, a ramming move. I think it's pretty intuitive. Like you do the double tap forward to run and then it's either punch or kick. Oh, maybe there's two different ones. Yeah, the punch does like a shoulder ram with this character. Yeah. And then like uh, Streets of Rage 3, double tap up or down will do the evasive roll in Z-depth. Right, uh, like, yeah. It looks a little goofy, but yeah. it, it, it's a really cool feature. Uh, yeah. Something a lot of people didn't think about with this jump. Yeah. Uh, they could have made it look like a more realistic roll. They, you know, they obviously this game does not have the kind of memory or graphical limitations or sprite limitations of 16-bit games. So the reason they made the roll look goofy in Streets of Rage 3 was they couldn't spend a lot of uh, frames and uh, a lot of sprites on the animation for the character while they roll up and down the screen. So they ended up doing this very tight ball roll but they copied that for this game, even though there was no reason to. They could have made it look like a much more natural, like a, a dive roll, like a um, like a yeah. gymnast would do, or a uh, you know a kung fu fighter would do. Um, it makes me know. wonder if that was just maybe a more complex animation they didn't want to bother with, since it's such a quick, yeah. simple move. You know, um, yeah. it's possible that maybe they just wanted to do one quick, easy... Yeah. Because it looks like it's almost the same animation for both up and down. Yeah, oh, I'm sure, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I have a feeling they were influenced by Streets of Rage 3, and kind of like it was quick to do, and it was good enough, and it's kind of homage to Streets of Rage 3, so why not? Yeah. But I definitely would have. Like, the rest of the game, they're taking it much more seriously visually. Um, so it feels a little out of place. Yeah, like, it, it definitely feels a little... Silly. You know, like, yeah, a little uh, Metroid Samus. I was just going to say, <laughs> hey, watch my uh, Samus imitation there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which, oh, they only get away with that there because uh, she's in a super-powered space suit and does yeah, all kinds exactly. of crazy stuff, but this is right. like regular people on the street, so... Yeah. Or I guess they're regular, I don't know. Right. Who knows? I don't really know the story. So if you hold up, I'm letting the players know. I know we just went over this, Corey, but if you hold up while you're button mashing the punch button, your last move will be an uppercut that sends the enemy up in the air, and you can mm -hmm. juggle them at that point. Um, and then there's another one. Oh, down and punch, and you'll basically slam the player to the enemy to the ground. But I'm pretty sure, unfortunately, that doesn't really affect gameplay because I don't think there's any way to hit an enemy while they're down. Or there might be, right. but it's not documented. Maybe doing your super move will hit them while they're down? I don't know. I suppose the only way it affects gameplay is how far you want the enemy to, to be. knock the enemy. Yeah. Which I don't know if there's an advantage to having them closer to you um, right. in any circumstance. But I suppose if if you played the game enough, you might find situations where that's handy or something. Yeah. But that's always one of the things I loved in the better, one of the best features of all the um, fighting games I played was the different ways you can play, change up your gameplay style, and also uh, a lot of different ways to take out enemies, and including hitting them while they're down. Throwing enemies into other enemies is always a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure you could do that in this game, I don't, although I don't think either of us has done it yet in this right, playthrough, right. but let's see if we... No, we'll see. <laughs> That's cute how she does a little hop and uses more yeah. of her uh, kind of body weight and torque. Um, it's nice, they, they, they seem to give some thought to the fact that she'd be less heavy than these men she's throwing around. Right, yeah. Yeah, it looks very natural and yet still cool, you know? Like yeah. It doesn't look, uh, looks like she knows what she's doing. Kind yeah, of. exactly. Like she's done it a million times. So she, nice apparently she, barrel trope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th those are the most dangerous gang members we're fighting are the flaming metal <laughs> barrels and the flaming um, right. wooden barrels, you know? Well, they had they had the barrels prepared for when we entered the bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
never run a gang in an urban environment without like wagons full of flaming barrels ready to <laughs> send tumbling toward uh, vigilantes. I guess uh, you know seeing them on the final fight subway is pretty weird, but I yeah. suppose in a bar it's slightly more acceptable that they have old school barrels, but not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a little weird. Yeah, it's definitely but I, weird. I know that was clearly just an homage type of thing. Uh, you know, Final yeah. Fight type homage. Or whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, I, sh I should say that's one of the things that, and maybe, like I said, we've not played this game much at all, but see how this guy can block uh, the enemy? Yeah. I'm pretty sure we can block two and counterattack, but only we're in a special mode, mode called... Oh, you see how it says press L for rage mode? Uh, yeah. That's the left analog stick, pressing it down, so now I'm in rage mode. Oh, you can you can pull the weapon too, right? I yes, yeah. Weapon. Yeah, we have... Uh, I, you have... I have 10 bullets, you have 25. They just straight up have guns uh, yep. in this game. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there was gun use in... Um, Streets of Rage 3, I think, but definitely in another really good and sort of under-known and appreciated uh, classic beat-em-up game, The Punisher. Um, mm -hmm. But in The Punisher, it was specific, it was limited to specific parts of levels. Like, it was just like a... Wow, she's... Yeah, there's, uh, the X button does special moves, by the way. Oh, even yeah, when like, you grab it, a, a... Is it context-sensitive, the, the X? Yeah, I think it's like if you have them grabbed or if you press forward, which was similar to Streets of Rage 2. Right. I nice, there, you grabbed well. them. Yeah, uh, it's not bad at all. This, I, like, I think there's like a very minor lag on my controls. Uh, right, because but it's of it. so minor that it's still very playable, but it still plays nicely. Uh, yeah. I think... Uh, I, wonder if... I think they, oh, they did a lot of testing uh, with with the gameplay, you know. So did you discover if you grab one of the big guns, uh, pressing the kick button will throw uh, throw the gun? Yeah, I did that with the crowbar I grabbed earlier. Oh, okay. Like I just yeah. accidentally immediately threw it yeah. <laughs> when I got it. So that was that's always nice to, <laughs> yeah. to do. This level was definitely highly influenced by, I think it's the second level in Streets of Rage 2, when you go into the bar. Yeah. The coloring, the light shafts coming from the top, and the, uh, mm -hmm. the round tables that you just, and the bar in the back, it's all extremely similar. So you can, you know, like we said, uh, uppercut them into the air and then the air juggling, up air juggle them quite a bit, which is fun. Yeah, and you can run too, we, yeah. we almost... You almost don't have too much in this. Yeah, no. The characters are so big on screen, and the enemies are always getting up in your face pretty quickly. So, uh, But it does lead to, if you need to get somewhere fast and uh, do the ram, it's uh, definitely nice to have. Always good to give the players a lot of mobility and a lot of options to mix things up. <laughs> I just rammed my shoulder-rammed myself off the screen at the end of the level. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fun though. I, I you yeah. know we we had only uh, briefly played it before, but I'm yeah I'm I'm enjoying it. A lot. Yeah, yeah. I wish. Oh, and this this one, yeah, it's like they zoom the camera out a little bit. Yep. Uh, I noticed. Yeah, it's cool. I wish we could uh, block and counter at all times, and there were more ways to hit enemies while they're down. But despite that, there's enough different things you can do and uh, to mix up the gameplay. And they keep changing the uh, environments and the enemies enough that it's definitely not gotten boring so far, which is great. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing some repetition of thugs, though. Yeah, definitely. Which, to be fair, was certainly the case when, with all the old uh, classic 16-bit, yeah. whether it be console and arcade. Um, Do they... Does this game have bosses? That's a good question. Um, we... We may have even beat the first boss without even no. Maybe that guy that could block was considered a boss or a sub boss. I don't know. Hmm. That's a good question. I'm just now realizing that we've we've gone. Through this is a boss. That's for All sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is flamethrower guy. This will be interesting. There, I'll throw an enemy into him. Always fun. 
Oh, bad guys with guns now, too. Well, I'll just, uh... There we go. Good idea. Fight fire with fire, I guess. I shall do the same. Eat lead. Yeah, the, the controls are pretty quick and easy to learn and uh, feel pretty intuitive. I'm not used to uh, explosives being so common during the gameplay. There's almost always yeah. something blowing up. And they do stay on screen and cover a lot. Yeah. For a good amount of time, which is a little... Uh, you know, I can't see yourself or what you're doing at all. They completely yeah. cover your character up, which is... Don't get me wrong, I mean, that that's how an explosion looks. Yeah, but exactly. It, it, from my gameplay perspective, oh. it's a full... Uh, jarring. Yeah. But we are fighting pyro guy or whatever. So yeah. Makes sense. Nice full screen effect for the victory. Oh, yeah. Nice nostalgic loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like the cartooning style just changed again a bit more. This feels like a almost a different artist did almost the same style as the first one. Or maybe yeah, they... Yeah. It's very... Okay, now it's getting closer. Hmm. Yeah, it definitely... See, this is more detailed. See what I mean? Like, this mm -hmm. is how the first... Maybe they maybe they just put more work into this. Yeah. It's the looking screen or something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, it is jarring, though, seeing that and then getting back to this. Yeah. This uh, beautiful detail. It makes me wonder why they didn't just take the pre rendered characters exactly, and yeah. out of that. You know? Even if they just quickly had an artist sort of paint over them to make them look more hand done and painterly, I think that would have uh, looked better and fit the style of the game more. Yeah. Keep in mind, everyone, this is a matter of personal taste at, the, at this point, and we're just talking about other approaches they could have taken in art direction and workflow. So yeah, we're, definitely we're thinking about those things all the time yeah, exactly. uh, as game developers, so it, it's it's not hypercriticism. It's yeah, exactly. a very quality game, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like I said, that artist clearly knows what they're doing, but it's, it's, yeah. it's a different, it's definitely a different style. That's, you know. Yeah. Things worth mentioning, I think. Right. Yeah. That flip move from Streets yeah. of Rage got included. Oh, yeah, there was another element. Oh, yeah, yeah, the fact that you can, yeah, jump over. Is that where you were talking about when you said flip? Yeah, you can yeah. flip over the guy you grab. Yeah, yep. right out of Streets of Rage. Uh, Definitely three, two also, maybe? I don't remember. I mean, I've played that game so much, but right now, it's funny, I can't remember for sure if you could do that in Streets of Rage 2. I think you could. Sometimes, uh, the, the only gameplay issue I'm noticing with this is sometimes you feel like lining yourself up to hit people can be a little... Yeah, it's too... Oh. Um, you have to be really accurate compared to most yeah. games. I agree completely. Like, I, I, I just find myself missing a lot more yeah. than I want to. Exactly. It's not that bad, I'd say, once you got used to it. But, but Considering how big the characters are on screen, compared to all the other beat-em-ups I've ever played, it's you need to be more perfectly lined up, or closer to perfectly lined up on the uh, Z depth, in order for the punches to hit. I appreciate how, with the environments, they... They wanted them to look, um, you know, they, they used 3D, but they, yeah. they used the texturing style that's, and enough lighting effects to where it's nice and it's, it's not overly done, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is feels, nice. Yeah. It feels like they, they struck a good balance between detail, yeah. but also not overdoing that detail. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a really nice modern urban, um, uh, architecture and layout and details like look at all those nice uh, worn out stickers on that door and 
Yeah, um, even that know, trash motorcycle, can everything's really nice. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, very simple, but it's it's got a nice texture without being um, like a bunch of clump mapping all over the place yeah. or something that's that's making it ridiculous. Um, it's it's a rich environment that does its job great and is like a realistic environment for them to be in, so to speak, a believable one for the content, right? For the context, but it's also not too distracting. And the, uh, yeah. they did a great job making sure the actual character, we'll call them sprites, character sprites are uh, show up really well no matter what. So, yeah, really, okay, really nice. Yeah. And uh, they're making sure there's that each environment has a different enough color palette and textures and stuff to stay interesting and where it's obvious. It doesn't get boring and it's obvious you're making progress going to new places. Yeah, definitely. I like the archway back there in the more park-like setting in the background. Very nice. Yeah, I noticed too that they're when you know since they've changed the lighting a lot in the various environments. I think they are doing some color shifting on the characters between yeah, the yeah. areas uh, to make them fit, which is a nice additional touch. Uh, yeah. You usually don't see that a lot with two uh, D with two D characters, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I did a good job without just you know throwing some big gradient over the whole screen or something to do that you know like yeah, a lot of people try to do that in, in a simpler way uh from yeah a technical standpoint and this was they clearly took the time and adjusted for level kind of thing so yeah, yeah so the uh, crowbar when you hit with it slams them down to the ground just like you're uh, just like you can hold up while you're button mashing punch to do an uppercut, the uh, holding down will slam them to the ground with sort of an overhead arcing punch, and the crowbar has the same effect. Just slams them to the ground. I'm wondering if her move set is a little different because, I, if, look, if I hold down, she does that kick that flip kick. thing. Yeah, so she, she does a different move. Interesting. Him. Well, that's good. Always good to offer that additional value for uh, to be able to pick different characters and have it really affect gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a throw a 90s throwback game. It's got this sort yeah. of techno soundtrack going on. Yeah, huge, hugely influenced from Streets of Rage 2, which is excellent. So is... Uh, yeah. So is Metro Siege, the fighting game we're working on. Um, There's the a drawing of the Hatchet Girl. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's graffiti. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's graffiti. really nice quality graffiti. And they did a great job making it look worn and filthy from all the car yeah. exhaust. Yeah, we, we've actually never seen this part of the game. Um, we never played it this far. We just did quick tests to see if we could uh, let's play it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting even more impressed with the game as we go. Yeah. Oops. Let's see. My super move. That's both uh, punch and kick at the same time if you have your super meter full. Oh, I just ate the uh, hamburger that you needed. Ah, it's Sorry about that. You're on a diet. Right. Anyway, your your P pee... clearly is. So. Yeah, your your pea head mouth is too small to fit a hamburger anyway. So right, you know. she can eat uh, you know like shakes with a straw. Or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna throw this crowbar. Oh, cool. Oh, no, I was about to say, can I hit these doors yeah. of this van? But no. No. Get get some special rocket launcher out of there or something that would be yeah. nice. Lots of exploding stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's what's making the explosions happen? Uh, for some reason, that not only are there a lot of barrels, very angry barrels in this game, there are also right. a lot of uh, very volatile propane tanks and grenades all over the place. Ah, it was grenades. I. Uh, I think I some like, of them is, were grenades. Is somebody trying yeah. to pick us off from a rooftop or something? Yeah. That's what I was thinking while that was happening. Like with the boss, he was spawning three grenades at a time. Um, 
He wasn't throwing them. He was just sort of making them appear. I think uh, we need to... Uh... Oh, that's interesting. Why did you fall on your back there? Is that a move you can do? Uh, like an elbow drop or something? I, I don't know. Are we being chased? I think we're getting chased by like a bulldozer or something. We need to get to the other side before we get crushed or something. I hear the bulldozer type thing. By the way, is the game volume loud enough for you? Uh, it is. And then, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I do hear a bit of a rumbling, but I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Know. There's no. Uh, I guess maybe it's we not haven't loud seen it yet for me to know what yeah. that would mean. That's an interesting concept uh, for yeah. a way to mix it up, I guess. Yeah, well, they're copying again or in being influenced by. Uh, Streets of Rage 3, there's a scene like this where you're getting chased and you can punch back. It's like a yeah, bulldozer was, and you can punch it. I was it less to... familiar with 3. Yeah. Um, I definitely felt the way you did that it, it, it even though it was a cool game, it it was missing something that 2 had. Yeah, uh, they, they went too far, they made it too long, um, in some ways too hard but not in fun ways. Um, I hear the Japanese version, I'm pretty sure, was less hard. Uh, mm -hmm. So like the Western release, uh, I just think they they ruined the nice balance they had with the overall amount of time the game took, and uh, it just started feeling too redundant and too not fun. And I, I think they really, I think the high mark of the franchise was Streets of Rage too. That's definitely a strange thing that happens, you know. Yeah. The developers, they spend all this time balancing the gameplay, and then yeah. for a different national release, they want yeah, to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they want to like change all that. It's like I understand updating certain aspects of it, you know. Yeah. But the gameplay is is a strange thing to want to address. Yeah, and that that was a common thing. It was uh, like just mm -hmm. the decision of even what game to port at all, and then sometimes the changes seemed very arbitrary or very like making these assumptions of. I think many times it was the opposite. It was like, oh, we need to make the game easier for those Americans or whatever. But in, in a couple of cases, they actually made the game harder for the Western releases. Yeah, it's, it, it's some strange meddling. Um, yeah. You know, I would feel a little weird as a developer if, yeah. if some publisher wanted to do that. You know, I'd be like, yeah. oh, you know, you're messing with... Uh, all these variables that, that we yeah. set up. Yeah, the, the one uh, decision like that, sort of regional marketing decision, I thought was excellent and right on the money and really did video games a great service was, oh, we're moonwalking to the uh, right place for the bosses to, uh, you know, for the conversation with the boss. That was funny. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, yeah, the... the um, the American, the guy at um, Nintendo USA that basically recommended to Nintendo Japan that they not release the real uh, Super Mario 2 because it was extremely right. similar to the first Super Mario game, but just frustratingly hard. Like, that was yeah, the whole point of it. Was, that was, yeah. uh, at that point, uh, NES games were starting to look a lot uh, better. better. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and, and it felt like basically just... A and quick, a cheap money grab. Yeah, 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 exactly. And um, and in that case, the gameplay, it was like, yeah, you know that game that you like? You know, here's a super hard, challenging version. I can understand that, but that has more limited appeal, and that's not necessarily fun. Yeah, you know it should I mean? have just been Mario 1.5 or, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, they didn't even want to market it as Mario 2 in America because they put it yeah, on exactly. the All-Stars releases and they called it the Lost Level. Right, they, exactly. They tried to market it like it was an extension. Well, that's because, America. yeah, that's yeah. because at that point they had already made the, in my opin opinion, brilliant decision to take Doki Doki Panic, which was made largely by the same team that made Mario, uh, which was a drastically superior game to uh, Super Mario The Lost Levels, especially from a... Um, uh, marketability and playability and uh, the, just the graphics that everything was on a whole new level of quality compared to um, Super Mario 1 and what we call in America the Lost Levels. So at that point the American market already considered 
that Doki Doki Panic reskin as Mario 2. So it would confuse the heck out of people if they called that like the real Super Mario 2 or something in All Stars. Right. Yeah. So it was cool they included it, but they had to give it a, a special name so that it wouldn't confuse the heck out of Americans who grew up with the Doki yeah, Doki. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not offensive that they did that. Clearly mm-hmm. they they wanted to make sure that people, it didn't cause confusion, but Yeah. It, it, it's but I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like that was yeah. a great decision. Yeah. And I, I believe too, unless you mentioned it already, that it yeah. was developed by people that Doki Doki game yep. uh was uh some Mario developers that Yeah, had, exactly. Yeah. So so it was it was right in the zone of mm-hmm. being the perfect um recipe yeah. for something great you know and, and it was cool it <clears throat> it mixed things up enough that it still felt right it felt like an extremely high quality evolution of the series but then the, like it felt like a really cool and very fresh progression in america from super mario brothers to that doki doki super mario 2 like it just the quality the, the increase in quality was amazing but graphically and conceptually it felt right at home in the Mario world. And then right. Super Mario 3 was even that further. It went back to its roots in a way, but the quality level and creativity was just another giant step. Um, yeah. So it was just, it was an amazing series. Uh, whereas if it went Super Mario 1 to the Japanese Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3 is such an immense jump in quality and creativity and everything compared to the lost levels it would have been a really weird giant jump in quality and a lot of people might may never have given super mario 3 the chance if super mario 2 were such a letdown right like such a mediocre um you know almost entirely the same yeah, graphics it, could have, it, it, it had the potential to possibly uh kill that franchise yeah in the west yeah and look look at what that would have changed with nintendo i mean look at how mario is now you know uh yeah had it had it failed back in the day because nintendo has shown that if something doesn't work they will drop it for a long time like uh, like f-zero or something Mm -hmm. like when's the last time they did one of those kind of thing uh legitimately so yeah a huge gap after the original stuff they they will look at the numbers and if something isn't selling they'll you know no matter how beloved it may be right uh, they will make decisions accordingly because they are a business right. you know right. um, but mario's they're clearly their big cash cow so. yeah and i think i think that american person that made that suggestion to them really um he really understood the market and understood like this is your mascot this is your flagship right. guy like don't make don't release like a kind of half half sequel when like you said a lot of third uh, party games even the quality level expected for nes games was just so much higher at that point yeah yeah you were getting i think that was uh, you know later 80s the nes had been around a few years and yeah. the, the, people were starting to understand how to how to make 8-bit graphics look nicer and they, like yeah. obviously that was a process at the time and people yeah. just weren't quite ready you know at, in the beginning that's why yeah. you had things like the the very you know old style arcade looking stuff that was early like kid icarus and stuff yeah. like that very yeah. primitive um yeah. in terms of its visuals uh, yeah. fun game yeah but, great game yeah but you know obviously you see what capcom and konami were doing and you're like wow kid icarus could have looked a lot better that's for you, know, sure. you, you look back on it retroactively yeah. So if you want to do a game remaster, yeah, that would like, be great. Uh, everybody wants to do these HD remasters. It's like, why don't you do that? Why don't you take yeah. the old game that didn't look so great and still yeah. make it run on the hardware, but make it look nicer? Yeah, know? the worst art choice by far, in my opinion, for that game. Here you have a game about a kid flying, and the levels are very vertical, and virtually yeah. nearly every level seemed to just have a black background. It's like, right. why not blue? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would have yeah, just the game would have looked so it much was a nicer. Typical, like they, they were they were less concerned because games yeah. hadn't much visually impressed at that point. And, yeah, and they were still in that zone of well, it doesn't matter as much. What better it was. than Atari twenty eight hundred? They still had that. <laughs> or twenty six hundred. And 
that that got stamped out really quick by the likes of some great artists that came along and said, "Hey, we can we can work with this." Now, yeah, you know, this is an old crusty Atari, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. And not, the, not to this Atari too much, but yeah, it's yeah. So yeah. hyper primitive with visuals, artists couldn't do much with it. Yeah, you know? and that's it. The, like the bar had not been raised yet, uh, and then they started really raising that bar. Uh, certainly by the time it was time to release a Super Mario 2 to the U.S. Uh, yeah. So yeah, anyway, yeah, th I think they made a very good choice. Yeah, there's the moonwalk again. This, this was a nice, uh, I like the rain effect. Yeah, there. very nice. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with the overall environment work and uh, progression. I think also, like, yeah, I didn't even notice because we've been chatting so much, but... It feels like there has been a completely organic transition from every level to every level, like a continuous... Agreed, yeah. I mean, there were those comic uh, interruptions, so we may have missed where it was a bigger jump. But you saw right there, like we just, you know, you walk out of one yeah. into the other or it transitions. Um, so very nice, very nice work. It feels like a cohesive, continual progress through some uh, crazy urban environment and it's very well done and they're keeping it interesting that's for sure yeah high, high quality uh you know good the production soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah they, they, they really polished it uh I, even yeah. the effects a lot of times people yeah. are tempted to overdo the effects i think right. you know other than that explosion issue i mentioned yeah uh, exactly. yeah they seem very natural mm -hmm. um, you know as far as just the fighting impacts and everything. So. Yeah. And even the big whole screen effects, it never distracts you too much from the gameplay itself. You never lose sight right. of your characters and what's going on in the actual combat. Ouch. And, and it, like, it doesn't take long, because I, you know, I hadn't played it much. It doesn't take long to just for it to feel pretty natural, and you get used to it, and it just, you keep wanting to play. You know, it's got yep. that slightly addictive quality you know yeah i would say it also obviously always has helps to have a friend to play with and chat with at the same time right that yeah. really uh, helps uh, games stay um you know uh, less uh, re repetitive and redundant um, are we supposed to yeah we're supposed to go somewhere i guess oh there we go oh wow. I, I would have liked a little arrow that that exit yeah, okay. was uh, definitely not that easy to spot Although I'm sure some people that are going to watch this video are going to be like, you idiots, can walk off to the well, right. yeah, there wasn't anything. It, it wasn't a very clearly drawn no. entrance. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? You couldn't, there wasn't a clear door there. It was just like a, a small thing. I just air juggled a guy with bullets. That's pretty impressive. Oh, that's a little yeah, weird. Yeah, after getting along in the game, there are a pretty good variety of, of enemies. Uh, yeah. You know, I knew, I I assumed they were going to start mixing it up, and they did. They even had yeah. those motorcycle guys on their bikes and stuff. That was pretty cool. Yeah. A little while back. Yeah, that was with very the, uh, Streets of Rage 2. With the motorcycles doing the obligatory exploding uh, as soon yes, as the guy crashed off the bike. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was right out of Streets of Rage 2. A lot of this... Uh, game is heavily influenced which like i said i think that's a very good thing it's a it's a great game to homage yeah definitely i'm not a fan of those water or those sludge yeah. droplets though uh, that's bugging yeah. me toxic waste giant toxic waste drops yeah at least it's toxic waste and not water I yeah guess. exactly <laughs> I, I was gonna make the same comment comment about uh how so many um very mundane um, sort of side-scroller platform games, especially out of Europe back in the day. It's like, oh, this cool warrior, isn't he cool? And now watch him get killed by a drop of water. These boxing gloves aren't going to help this guy. I, I suppose they can help him fight longer, but it's going to reduce the impact. You know, the, the girl's not messing around. She's bringing her hatchets yeah. to the fight. Strange yeah. thing to bring to a street fight, that's for sure. But, it, but it was, you know, like, they, they, they wanted variety. 
so they yeah. uh, clearly did. I, I also like that they, since they included guns in your characters, they took that into account with the enemies. Like they got the yeah. mercenary guys. Of course, they hardly use their guns, but right. Uh, it's still, it's nice to add. You know, yeah. enemies that uh, are appropriate for your guys. I get the very strong sensation that this chick with the bat likes to cosplay as uh, what's her face, the Joker's uh, girlfriend, Harley yeah. Quinn. Maybe the Hatchet Girl too. She's got yeah. the, the dyed hair, but yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. The... She wasn't um, too prepared uh, in terms of her uh, <laughs> her, her dress, as you yeah. know. Kind of coming out uh, in whatever she was wearing that day you know, with the bat. Yeah. So. Either one or both of us can do the rage. Uh, you might want to try it since I, I've done it once. It's, yeah, how, how is it? You uh, click down the left analog uh, control pad, like the left right. analog stick. Okay, okay. Give it a try once this... <laughs> that's such an old, like... Um, what was that game? Primal Rage or something? Like pre-rendered yeah. char fighting game character silly idol animation? Mm -hmm. Like the players look way more natural. They're much better done. Like that they one's just the, goofy. They did the underground fight too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See the guys. Back like there. more Streets of Rage 2 uh, influence. Oh, and that was after a big elevator downward too. Yeah. Um, so you said press L? You click it in. Not the le left trigger. The, uh, the left analog stick. Um, and, and, and like that's it's you just click it down yeah it, it's not yeah it's not doing anything maybe only you can do it i don't know or try the other analog stick clicking it down maybe it's just not mapped the same for oh. you no oh there is that yep it? yep you're in reach yeah, mode. Okay. that's why the whole screen's red and, and then click. Yeah, I, I'm always thinking L is the actual L button. Yeah, that's uh, like left trigger. Yeah, no, but you said yeah. click the analog stick, and I was like, oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's that's an odd uh, button for this, but yeah. So this just uh, gives me like extra fighting power. Or something. Yeah, and you can even like block and counter or somehow. I forget how when you're in that mode. Like I said, I, w I really would have preferred if you could do block and counter all the time. Right. It doesn't make sense in rage mode when you're supposedly not thinking clearly and not relaxed that you'd be a better martial artist other than just enhanced strength. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just doing regular fighting moves during it, but it seemed... Yeah, maybe like faster, like more damage. Same, almost. Uh, yeah. But, no. I'm assuming your attacks maybe did a bit more damage. Oh, oh I, I guess I can pause it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think anybody can. Uh, can you I rejoin the game, though, or are we I, literally I out know. of lives? It, it looks Oops. Like, uh, Did oh, you do wait, that? Or? Okay. Possibly. Yeah, okay. I was just trying to rejoin. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. I guess that's... Oh, maybe there's actually a limited, limited amount of lives? All right. So uh, maybe to finish this video, we can find if there's a cheat level skip and then we'll cheat for more lives and get back to this to get to the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, sure. Before we release the video. Yeah, we didn't really know uh, how long this game was or yeah. anything. It seems like it's a decent, uh, yeah. you know, got a decent amount of levels and bosses. I, I I was glad that that there are bosses. I was worried for a yeah. second. I was like, oh, man, they're not going to have bosses. But... Oh, there's the end of that one. Oh, this is only stage three. Wow. I wonder yeah, how many stages. So each stage is pretty darn long. Yeah. <laughs> butt up in the air that was an undignified uh death pose for or lost pose oh my goodness <laughs> wow uh, big tough guy's a cry baby Boo? <laughs> and so i guess i guess we're on a boat yeah, yeah we'll just see how much farther I can get before uh, but I mean maybe maybe we can both continue once I die too yeah. oh there you are look at that oh. Oh, weird so it... I assume you tried the start button and it just paused it after you died right yeah it didn't it didn't say rejoin yeah but how weird maybe it just 
Maybe maybe if there's a second player, when you beat a level, it just auto gives them one life. Because it only gave me one. So. Yeah. That's how many I have, too, right? Yeah. I guess that's neat, but if you're going to do that, you might as well just... Yeah. Back into the fight, I don't know. Yeah, I've never seen any other fighting game handle it that way, so it was confusing, to say the least. Maybe there are continues, like you said, though, uh, or something like that. You know? Yeah, for the whole team, I guess. So you don't lose all of your progress right. and you want to replay. Hopefully so. That'll make finishing this Let's Play and video much easier. Yeah. I've got to say, like, uh, because of the uh, button mapping, I've only done successfully jump kicked uh, somebody a couple of times in the, in the entire game uh, playthrough. Because it's the punch is where the kick should be, basically. So I'll, like, jump and do a silly downward punch instead of a jump kick. Right, yeah. Is it? Watch out, those explode, the propane tanks. Oh, yeah. yeah. And these barrels. Lots of splody stuff in this game. And money comes out of exploding barrels. <laughs> All righty. Oh, there's a... Oh, we missed it. That's how I make money. Yeah. All right, we're supposed to go somewhere, I guess. Yeah, this is... What's up with that? Strange. Maybe we go back? I don't know. Huh. Oh, uh-oh. I hope it didn't bug and... Uh... What are we supposed to do here? There's no indicator of anything. Oh, there's oh, a guy there. A guy. He must have been stuck behind an off-screen barrel or something. Yeah, and it didn't let us progress. Weird. Interesting. Oh, a little remote control car. I'm sure it's going to blow up. Get out of the... Yep. <laughs> That's clever. I didn't even... I, right when I saw it. Is yeah, it here comes another one. Careful. Right. Wow. Cool idea, though. I yeah. Like yeah, they, they uh, sort of are doing what um, my idea was when making Metro Siege, taking the... Um, obviously getting influence from Final Fight and Streets of Rage 2, but going back to the original influence that influenced the Japanese uh, game studios in the first place, which was the old American vigilante movies from the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, that exploding remote control car thing was definitely used in a few movies, but not yeah. those vigilante movies from back in the day, more modern movies. Right, right. It, like, yeah, I don't think I had ever seen that in a in one of these brawlers. Yeah, no, necessarily. Exactly. So that, that's why I found it interesting. Yeah. It, it can be a trope. But yes, yeah. yeah, it's it's a fun it's little bit of gameplay. You know, yeah, a lot of people did get stuck in a mode of yeah you know, making these games too traditional, formulaic, like outside the box. Exactly. Lot, so. Yeah, I'm I'm gone again. So uh, uh, oh well, if I can get through this level, then uh, you can come back. That's fine. Yeah, it's just a shame that uh, if you're gonna let someone continue, let them continue so that. Uh, you're not stuck with one player. I mean, I understand the uh, the drama of like, oh, can can oh, well, it's good that the explosion actually hurt the enemy. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Shoulder ram. It's nice that the shoulder ram can hit more than one enemy at a time. Nice. That was a good juggle. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Lots of splodies. Oh, I fell for that old, you have to be really well lined up to hit the character. But since she swings a bat, she doesn't have to be as well lined up with me. I would have expected at least one enemy in like a raincoat or something in this level, but I guess not. Yeah, like, really. It, it's just, they just take ah. the people and put them in here. I wish they made the propane tanks also blink red when they're about to explode. That one just yeah. sort of was rolling around and then blew up. Caught me off guard there. Where is it? I don't even see the thing that's going to explode. Oh, over there. So does it uh, feel a little bit less fun single player, I guess? Uh... A little bit, but at the same time, things are also less chaotic and there's more pressure on me to survive, so... 
Right. I'm digging it. It's it, it's not bad at all as a one player game. Um, but always more fun in general in two player. I like that they took into account in the backdrop of the the water splashing on the side of the boat. That's a cool uh, additional. You know, it just yeah. It, comes up every now and again when the, yep. when the boat goes down on that side they paid specific attention to the rocking of it yeah the crashing wave so to speak yeah the, yeah the water surface breaking um yeah i had the same thought but i forgot to mention it and it makes the um, <laughs> the additional shininess of the skin texture uh more appropriate yep. in the summer yeah, i was yep i had wet. the same thought yeah exactly they all fit nicely yeah. Yeah, that was a clever way to have a, like, um, what do they call it, like, heat-seeking type uh, enemy, the little remote control cars. Mm -hmm. I dig it. It was a nice addition to the, you know, it breaks up the monotony of all of the uh, explosives all over the place that just sit there and go off over after time. Makes it a little more urgent. Yeah. No oh boy, got to get up three propane tanks. Why am I going through? Oh, yeah, that's... A... The, one, the one thing that surprises yeah. me about the thugs in this game is that there are actually two Mohawk guys. What's like up with they, that? You know what, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's they crazy. went out of their way to give uh, two of them. That uh, silly Popeye hat on this other guy. <laughs> he is what he is. He just had his uh, spinach. Yeah, exactly. Ready to go. He's good to the finish. <laughs> Well, I can go into rage mode, I might as well. Ah, whew, something saved my... Oh, I think... Oh, no, I don't know what... Those were quick barrels. The, extremely. Was, yeah. I don't understand what saved my butt there. It, it, it's almost like my character just turned around and blocked an exploding thing. I have no idea what just happened. Right. Maybe one of the barrels accidentally hit... The, the other, other one? one? That would be funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely my biggest problem so far. I'm really having trouble jump kicking instead of doing that useless downward punch. Don't shoot me. Oh, yeah, and we're not using our gun enough. Uh, let's see. Well, I noticed when it did that whole letting me restart, it, it gave me zero ammo. So I tried to use it at one point. Oh, right. And, uh, so it, it kind of gimps you a little bit Yeah. Uh, in a weird way. Yeah, you have to pick up the ammo, I guess. But yeah, it would, uh, yeah, it would make sense. I guess if you run out completely... Oh, you should be back. On, ...ongoing, yeah. even if you die, you still yeah. have to grab ammo. That's interesting. Yeah, exactly. You should be back, by the way, hopefully. So uh, okay. get ready to fight. Yep. Yeah. I'll try a little better to survive. Yeah, well, it's... That's how far we can... To be. me, it's like, oh, you wow. just have to remember, everything will explode, so keep right. away from everything except for other ba like bad guys to hit. That's how I've managed to stay along for those two levels when I was alone. There's yeah, a car, get honestly, out of the way. Yeah, honestly, I'm not a big fan of things exploding that Me you neither. can get power-ups out of. Like, like yeah. things that you can take down, that's a little... I mean, I, I get it, like, in the early days when they were trying to mix up um, stuff. Whew, I didn't get I'm, I'm more forgiving, yeah. but yeah. to me, it's the explosions are so big in this game, it yeah. feels a little... Yeah. I don't know. Let the focus be combat. You know yeah. what I mean? Dodging explosives all the time is not. They did get a little fun. heavy with that sort of stuff. Because I noticed that yeah. when you were playing in that last level, it's like. They're, yeah, they, like you would think the remote control cars would be like limited in that level, but it's like, no, we just saw one. You know, yeah. we get to the next level and there's another one, so. I'm surprised we haven't seen one of the wooden barrels roll onto the screen, stop halfway, open up, and two remote control cars roll out of the barrel. Well, gotta have, well we're going to have to get that barrel sequence sent to Metro C. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not to be outdone. We'll show them how to handle remote control uh We'll have our explosives. barrels, like... They come, they're like transformers. They come out and they turn into guys to fight. So that'll be more interesting. Yeah, you're definitely meant to jump over the flaming barrels. By the way, I tried to punch it like an idiot. Oh. 
he his back was turned and he turned around and blocked a sword being thrown at him. <laughs> now that's blocking ability. It must be all the baby oil on his skin <laughs> made the sword slip right off of him instead of cut him. He's he's like Colossus, I guess. He's yeah. Like that. Steel skin. Are those cars just points or uh, or what? The, like the little car icons oh, you yeah. pick up. I don't know. I, I guess so. They don't seem to do anything else. I, I sub, you know, I noticed there are the various pickups that yeah. don't seem to matter uh, much. Yeah, like at first I thought that was another thing right out of Streets of Rage 1 where your super move was the cop car you would call and they'd launch a bazooka at the enemies. Um, I, I feel like having pickups for points doesn't like even though yeah you ha you have to take the time yep. to get it exploding car second, careful yeah i feel like it's it's a bit of a cheap way to get points i guess yeah. um rather than performing something agree yeah um, yeah there see i just i just blocked an explosion because i'm in rage mode so in normal gameplay you apparently can't block anything at all ever but when you're in rage oh. mode Wow. Oops, I did it too for no reason. Oh. That's uh, the super that, move. Punch yeah, and kick at the same time. So we've just got a helicopter at the ready. Uh, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> does an airstrike or something. Yeah. In the, in the underground place. Or inside. Yeah. You know, wherever we are. And well, this is... This is inside the ship, right? I guess. Yeah. Oh, again. Yeah, very much influenced by Streets of Rage too. You can get that apple, you need it more than me. It definitely, um... Ooh, explode. I, I do like the progressing levels, though. Like, yeah. It's got a sort of, you know... Yeah, it feels like a cohesive uh, world and adventure, and everything stays interesting without, um... I mean, this one's definitely one of the more drab levels, and none of them yeah. were super saturated, but it's nice. It's they found a nice though. balance, yeah. and the really important thing is... It's rich and interesting, but not distracting, and uh, the characters uh, stand out nicely from it. So good job with the art directing. The balance is nice. Yeah, yeah. They took uh, what is a fairly mundane looking place that's yeah. simple uh, in terms of its, but they, you know, they they kept it within the style, and it probably doesn't linger here too long. I'm sure we'll get to something. Yeah. Uh, Pretty visually interesting scene. Yeah. Oh, and this level oh, reminds wow. me. Oh wow! Is that a is that a, a robot? robot? Yep. Wow. Didn't expect that. Me neither. But that, again, this is extreme. This is taken out of Streets of Rage too. Right. Near the end of levels, you get these robots. These are like more scene. realistic robots, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Know, like, sort of. Um, yeah. Oh, one of those moments, like, where do we go? Is there an enemy stuck somewhere? What's up with this? Careful exploding propane tanks. Hmm. Interesting. Is it is it this door back here? We're is to go that in? a door? Yeah. I don't know. I guess not. Hmm. So far, this is definitely the least polished thing that ideally they could have fixed. Maybe they will someday. Hmm. That's the nice thing about Steam. They can just update the game whenever they want to, from a technical standpoint. Well, come on. Oh, that, that's Blaze's exact uh, special move. Uh, and that's very similar to uh, Axel's thing, what I just did. Wow, it looks like we're Yeah, I'm not digging this, guys. Yeah. That's, so, that's such a shame. This has Let's been walk back. really fun. Uh, and neither of us has a super move, so we can't do something that might kill someone if they're stuck off screen. There's literally nothing to interact with here at this point. Not that I it's, can see. The, there's the edge of the screen. Yeah. Let's see if there's a guy over there or exactly. something. I don't know. And even Maybe if there is, oh, way back here. Let's try shooting off screen yeah. in both directions. <laughs> we should not have to do this, guys. Fix this. <laughs> Considering how polished uh, everything the game is, is I, I'm, this is a I'm big problem. To see this. Yeah. yeah. 
Hmm. Like, and if we're missing something, and we're not actually stuck, that's a flaw in game design. Two veterans beat it, beat them up. Game players should not. You know what I mean? I mean, like, there it's is like this where's door Waldo? Here, but yeah. I'm like, is there a button we go in there? No, or? it just looks like part of the background graphics. It doesn't look like an interactable yeah. door. And you notice we can't walk anywhere close to it. That's like you know, two feet right. away, three feet yeah. away. So I, I don't think that's it. But what is the solution, uh, or is it just, uh... Your gun sounds much bassier than mine when you fire it for some reason. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not messing around. It's got the... I've got a pea shooter. Was... Well, I guess, uh... And the level's not on a timer, so you're literally stuck. Is that, is, yeah. It, can can we re, like restart the level or something? Uh, let me pause and see what. Uh, resume. There's literally quit. That's pause and quit. Uh, select is for controls. Uh, yeah, that's select is just character like controls. Um, mm -hmm. The Xbox button does nothing. Are you kidding me? There we go. So it looks like we are forced. We did a quick bit of research, and mm -hmm. this is a known bug that was reported a couple months ago that the developer does know about. Hopefully they'll be able to fix it, but the only solution right now seems to be to quit out and then to go it back into the game, and we can select that up to that level. Yeah, so, and to give the developer a little credit, I, you know... Uh, whether you want to take it as being completely honest or not, they did say that it was just something they never came across. Exactly. Yeah. A developer I'm try can't. This. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Good I'm idea. Try this other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't, uh, a uh, a developer cannot fix a bug until they know the bug exists. That's just a fact right. of reality. Yep. And this seems to only happen in co-op, which really explains why other people haven't reported it. True. Yeah. Or at least the person that did report this problem was playing with in co-op, and so are we. So that's probably. I wonder, you know, since this uses this Steam feature for co-op. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what the solution is on other platforms if it's similar, or yeah. I mean, does like the Switch have, you know, like that kind of thing built yeah. into it? I, I don't know. I don't have a Switch. But... Yeah, the the developer said that the code is identical between the two platforms. So whatever he's using, okay. yeah. Um, so oh, be careful of the yeah. Oh right. Yeah, you got to run and jump away oh, from those things. Slow You're slow. Too, yeah. Yeah, jump oh, wow. kick is definitely awkward because of the button uh, layout on the Xbox controller. Nope. I wonder if I got saved from that explosion just because I grabbed someone. That would be weird. I thought that explosion was going to hit me. I tried to walk away from it, and instead I grabbed an enemy, which is a big part of things like that is why I made it in Metro Siege. Grab is a specific thing with a special button prompt and uh, or button input you need to do to grab. And uh, mm -hmm. so you don't accidentally grab people when you're trying to walk around. Yeah. And like your character actually lunges forward, grabbing at the the you know grabbing at the enemy, and can actually miss the grab. Um, the the one credit I'll give them on that is no. you have to get pretty close to grab on this. Yeah. One. So you, you, it does seem a little more deliberate uh, most of the time, but right. But I know what you mean. Like it, it's too easy in these types of games to get right up on people. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially with the characters being big and you're always running from explosions so that was my case like i was already pretty close to the right edge of the screen i go to basically run away from the uh, explosion and an enemy was coming from that side of the screen so uh, this guy's not good at dodging barrels so. yeah that's a good point yeah it's uh i'm pretty sure just a well-timed jump is your best option by far for those it would have th that would have been a great use for their side uh, role thing. You know? Oh, good uh, point. Yeah. But, but in that instance, they they were all the way across. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Most of the time, the barrels come in a complete row, so like you're forced to jump. But that's a great idea. Like, encourage the players to use the moves you give them at different parts yeah. of the game to switch up the gameplay. That's an excellent point. Yeah, a good uh, game designer is, you know, having a feature just for the sake of it uh, isn't as good as right. having it uh, being into the design. Exactly. Level. Yeah. Make it really useful in some cases. His is admittedly slow. He's slow with everything. He's... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, he's not nearly as fun as uh, the other character, that's for sure. Well, that's a shame. I think you have to uh, really like... Like, I think there's quite a few different pretty grisly-looking grappling wrestler-type moves you could do to the enemies. Ah. So you might be able to enjoy that if you get used to his controls, but... In a game like this, yeah. where you're always running from well, explosions, being slow is not. Yeah, I, I think that's the big issue. It, it's the fighting's fine with him. It, it's fun, but yeah. Ah. Uh, Bars and whew. you know. But I, I'm glad they included a different type of character. Yeah, exactly. Developers, if you're listening, if you make a sequel to this game ever. Add some ability, some more, or make it more obvious if you can. I haven't figured it out. Let people hit enemies while they're down, and let uh, let people block and counter um, during regular gameplay, and not just in rage mode. And will be a fantastic uh, beat 'em up game. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Uh, yeah. It it gets you know it's it's repetitive in the in the, and I yep. think that speaks to the length of the game. Like exactly. The feeling feeling longer is. The only reason it feels that way is because you're doing the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, but it does seem, and uh, when we were researching that problem where we got stuck in this level before, hopefully that won't happen again, um, it is a long, longer than usual for this kind of game. Luckily, it does save your progress automatically, which has allowed us to come back here. But still, in my opinion, a good action game like this, ideally... Two good players can get through the whole game in roughly a half hour or so. It just right. makes it a more gratifying experience to be able to pick up the game, go through it from beginning to get to end, get that victory, and um, you know what I mean. Like you can add more instead of just making the whole game super long to get through. To add that value, you can make branching paths and introduce right. more playable characters to control. To to add a lot of replayability. I, I agree. Like if you're gonna add that many levels or that much content, mm -hmm. still keep the gameplay session shorter. But yeah, yeah that let people mix it up. Yeah, is what, where you add the value. Yeah, exactly. I'm not loving the look of those max. Me neither. And especially, it feels like they animated them in a way where they were kind of warping the textures, the parts a little, and it doesn't cook, look quite right in 3D. It looks like they're warping in a weird way. Yeah, the characters move Oh so boy, smooth. this is the same oh. spot, isn't it? Oh no, oh, it just worked that time. It, it, yeah. I just walked off the we right edge of the screen. We walked the edge last time, didn't we? I'm pretty sure. Imagine if we never did, like expecting to get <laughs> sucked off. Like, you know, in most games, that sounds bad, get sucked off. But, you know, in most games, the uh, you get close to that, or it automatically walks you off the edge. Yeah. So, I don't think, like, other people complained about the same problem. So, either it's just that unintuitive, or we really were stuck. I think we did try to walk off. This guy's... Uh, arm with the chain on it looks very distorted yeah yeah oh yeah I, I keep forgetting you have to press a to uh continue and, and again i you know and i know we did get stuck and restart this level but yeah. it still feels like like i love these rain effects and stuff but yeah. we've been on the ship a while it's yeah. like this is a long ship level you know? yeah exactly <laughs> Like I, but uh, you know, I'm still. Yeah, it's still a good game. High yeah. enough where you want to see what's next. You know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so at least it has a lot of that going for it. Yeah. They are extremely forgiving when he does that spinning move. Like I just punched him or grabbed him right out of it. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm somehow out of ammo. Even though I never used my gun the whole time. I, I guess... Yeah, you really have to pick up the ammo to earn it, I guess. I mean... He's blocking my bullets from behind, that's not cool. He's bare-chested. I guess because we continued, I guess it still kept me at zero ammo or something? I don't know. Maybe. Strange. It, still, it, it, gave, it, gave, it refilled him, our yeah, lives. Exactly. Right? So that's what to say. Or maybe since this guy uses his gun in regular combos, he's actually using ammo. Right. During that. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No, didn't you have the same problem with the female character? Uh... During, like, just no ammo after you died? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, when it would respawn me, I thought it was a feature of the game, but maybe maybe there's a bug going on. But, yeah. uh, sure. or, or maybe it is, like, game long, oh, even I'm if dead. you continue, you have to keep picking up ammo, which I guess I'm just not finding any air picking up. Oh. Especially a big, wide guy like this. You have to be so perfectly lined up with him in Z-Depth. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, wow, that is... Oh, I have a super I'll hit him with. I'm glad that hit him. It looked for a second like it wasn't gonna... Oh, is lightning hitting the deck every once in a while? I think that's what that was. Yeah, team up on him. There you go. It's always underwhelming when you just yeah, one when little love you do tap. The final blow with like a little a little, a little tap, a little jab. Yeah. All right, they defeated that guy, and I wonder if I guess we're getting off the boat, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Did you right. hear the voice acting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Definitely better quality voice acting than most of the 16-bit games had back in the day. Yeah. Some of that was uh, really <laughs> laughably bad. Oh yeah, the, when, when the early days of video yeah. game voice acting were yeah. low budget. Uh, and, and you know, a lot of times in those instances... It just developers. Like, yeah, real boy. yeah, <laughs> yeah it's exactly. Just like some guy they had in their office or something. They had yep. to come by and record some live. Which I'm sure that's still done quite a bit, uh, yep. more than people realize. It is a budget issue. Yep, for sure. Game. Yeah, I really miss being able from playtesting Metro C so much, I really miss being able to hit enemies while they're down. I'll have to research that when uh, when I edit this video together. If there is a way to do it, I'll definitely uh, put an, an annotation in the video explaining how. Right. I've but not... No obvious way, that's way. for sure. Yeah. I mean... Getting this guy where he needs to be is yeah. hyper slow, but once he's fighting, he's, he's yeah. pretty nice. I mean, he can pick some butt. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and he's, look how tall he is and how long his legs are. He would not move that slow. He's just like underwater. That was a. I, I do just, like. Yeah. Uh, well, that's fine. Um, I was going to say, I do like how they they take into account the z-depth and they they scale yeah. the characters slightly you know oh nice i didn't even notice that that's a great thing yeah to point and, like out. see how i'm getting smaller yeah yeah. Like, yeah yeah it's pretty cool and it, it certainly uh it, it would be glaringly missing since the environment is actually 3d if the characters yeah. didn't scale it would be bizarre it would be like they're becoming bigger people when you walk up into the screen since they don't shrink or wouldn't shrink so it's one of those things they did it so right I didn't even notice. Yeah. Whereas yeah, if they did it didn't do it or did it poorly, then it would be really it bad. It would feel unnatural because they've yeah. got this nice perspective in each environment. So yeah. Actual it's vanishing nice, point. Nice, yeah. It's one of those examples of a very minor touch mm. that they clearly 
tweaked very well, but you don't notice it. it yeah. And that, that's sometimes those are the best kinds of things. It feels natural. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is often the... Oh, wow. This is... Yeah, you got to jump it very carefully. Like you said, it would have been great if there were some instances of the rolling hazard, uh, uh, you know... Uh, rolling hazard gameplay where you could roll instead of jump to evade I, it with this. I honestly, I feel like that's something that Final Fight established that I never yeah. actually liked. Yeah, like, trope yeah, that. I remember when we were playing that one, and yeah. I felt the same way even just playing the old arcade. I don't feel nostalgic or feel like it enhances the game. Not at all, those, yeah, I completely things. agree. Uh, and they just kept it. It's it's like oh, they got this genre got in that tradition yeah. and they just kept it alive and I, it's like it doesn't it's Donkey Kong's know. fault <laughs> well and the thing is it's like the idea of environment hazard in these games is not a terrible idea it's right. just they, it's like they never came up with really good ones yeah. for these uh, you know it's something to think about for anybody out there yeah. anybody else out there working on beat em ups too is yeah. you know maybe maybe think about that a little bit because uh you know, usually the most creativity you get is the way thugs will come in or something, right? Uh, or be activated. You know, breaking through a window or something, and that's cool. But there's probably other things that can be done. You know, right? Absolutely. Oh, this is interesting. Well, yeah, I've wanted to say a few times and keep forgetting, getting distracted. I actually don't like picking up the big guns or weapons in general. Because you're largely crippled uh, with the weapon, like you can't run up and grab people. Uh, there's so many things you can't do with it. Um, yet the shooting, you still have to hold the right mouse button and fire. Like if I'm crippled and punch and uh, kick don't work anymore at all, which makes no sense. If I'm holding that gun, why can't punch just make me do a, uh, you know, like hit people with the, uh, with the um, handle of the gun or something? And uh, why can't I kick? And if I can't, if those attack buttons don't do anything while I'm holding a gun, why do I have to hold the right trigger to hold to fire the special gun? It's just unnecessary, unnecessarily awkward. This is fun. I'm shooting the gong. Yeah, you can't That's destroy those either. I, I wondered if they function in some way. Yeah, what's uh, the point of them? In the level. Yeah. Like if it like stuns the enemies or something when you hit it, I don't know. Why can't I throw this gun? It used to be the kick button. What's going on? I can't throw the gun away. It's... Really? Yeah, you, it used to be the kick button alone to throw it, and now I can't. I guess that is weird. Maybe using it up will... Well, that's lame. That? I don't know. Yeah, look how much I'm missing these guys. Like, are they... Yeah, the Z-order thing is really, really... Uh, it's apparent, with, unless these guys are supposed to be ducked down and dodging, I don't know strange to say the least. Yeah. Like, look at that. Yeah. I barely... Um... Oh, I think I'm in a bugged mode, because look, no matter where I go, it acts like I'm picking up an item when I press punch, hmm. and kick does nothing. So maybe I, I this is just a bug. either. Look at this. Uh, oh, boy. I guess it's supposed to be like he's ducked, right? That, that's the That's the gimmick? Maybe you have to know. take them out with guns? I don't know. And this oh, this thing has infinite ammo, too. I can't get rid of it that Maybe way either. Maybe that's what the gongs are for. Maybe they make these guys stand up. Or... Weird. I don't know. Just... Yep, go ahead. I am confused about these enemies. I'm... Like, you're having a really hard time any, hitting I them? I don't have any... Yeah, I can't hit them. Uh, I, I don't have any ammo either, so yeah. I'm kind of useless against them. That's ridiculous. Like, look at this. I, I, hmm. Even though he's kicking low, you know, like... It's just going right through? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if it's a bug. I hope not. That's... Or bad game design. I'm getting that done. Oops. Oh, come on. I aimed the other way to, before I jumped. Or I held the controller anyway. Hmm. They better make me drop this uh, gun before the next level, because this is way less fun. Like yeah, all you, I can do is shoot. I can't do. Time. And it says infinite ammo too, so you yeah. can't even run out of ammo. I literally can't do anything else. Maybe that's what. Maybe that's what they did with this level. If 
I had the chance to pick up a gun at the beginning and I didn't do it. Right. And I bet I was supposed to. So, so they I didn't even the program game. proper fu fighting collisions with those enemies? I think uh, so. I hope I not. I think this was meant to be a gun level. Uh, even though they might as well just have given you infinite ammo on your guns. Oh, continue. You know? Excellent. Um, yep. I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that that's what they, they they went for, and it didn't quite come together the way they wanted, you know. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm not picking up. Oh, yeah. Well, no, we should, huh? I guess. I guess so. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, there we go. You have to remember, you have to hold right trigger, or you can't do anything, and then it's the punch button. So can you kick or uh, do anything? No. Yeah, and and A makes a, it like and, you're. Yeah, and it looks like I'm picking stuff up like this. I guess that's just supposed to be a duck. Like you can duck while you have a gun, which seems pretty pointless. I think it's I think it, you that you can still pick stuff up, and they just didn't weird didn't set it up so that it has no animation for that. It, it's like you could you just do it over and over, you know. Weird. So I guess this maybe was just an oversight, you know, or something they didn't get around to handling or something. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this rain of arrows. Are we supposed to dodge that? Yeah, mm. I guess this is meant to be the shooting level. <laughs> but if it is, force the, char force the characters to pick it up at the beginning. I, I suppose it explains why in the shooting level they gave you, like, zombies to fight instead of yeah. you know, just mowing down a bunch of people uh, yeah. or something. Yeah, I must say, too, I am not a fan, and I think they went a little too far in Streets of Rage 2 and much too far in Streets of Rage 3. But if your game starts out really, like, grounded and in the realm of real vigilante storylines and stuff like that... Yeah. Like, do we need to get into zombie and alien land and stuff like that? Um, I, I feel the same way. I mean, the environment itself is fine uh, yeah. as far as the way it looks. Uh, and I was impressed when I saw it. But yeah. Was, but the, the minute those zombie things walked in, I was. It's like this is a totally different yeah. fantasy land or something, you know. Yeah, exactly. With a, with different gameplay, no less. So it feels awkward. Yeah. Um, it definitely feels a little incomplete, especially because with these guns, you're no longer a fighting character. Suddenly, you're you can't kick your feet, you can't grab people, you can't ram people for no reason, like. Why can't I run up to someone and ram them or hit them with the butt of the gun? It was, it, like, the, the fighting mechanics are so good, too. Yeah. That, that's that's the shame of it, really. Um, I want to punch these things. Exactly. And kick. And ram. Do you, you know, I, and I hate making a, too many assumptions like this, because uh, mm -hmm. it's just a guess on my part, right. but... I'm wondering if this was an art limitation and the guy only had so many animations for this zombie and decided to make this level. And, f and, and yeah, put know. it in because the environment was done or something. Right. And was like, well, I can't do the actual fighting mechanics for these zombies, so... But I'll include it anyways. I don't know. It's but only a guess, though. The bug is gone on my side. It no longer uh, ducks uh, when I press punch. Is that true for you? No, it's still... For me. What is going on? Why would it arbitrarily change for me? That's a bug. That's definitely yeah. a bug. Yeah. I think it's after I actually grabbed a real thing, it fixed it for me. It's probably not supposed to do it any time. Yeah, yeah, try grabbing that. See if it fixes it. Okay. So that... okay, let me... It's still doing it. Did you grab a thing? I thought I did, but maybe it just... Yeah, I think I you were too low for it, and but because you did the action you thought you did, maybe? Yeah. Oh, this is annoying. Yeah, it's... Well, it's, I just feel too it's crippled. It's sudden unfun, despite this yeah. gorgeous environment, though. Like, yeah. That's, that's the only thing that makes it worth seeing, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely hoping we get back into actual beat-em-up gameplay in the next level. Yeah. Surely that's the case. I'm I'm guessing this is a one-off. Yeah, this was meant to break up the gameplay. Yeah, it just feels a little half-baked. 
and um, and there's only you know there's it's the same zombie over and over too like yeah oh, good not, point good point yeah it's not there's no variation at all yeah it's, maybe the boss is like a big giant zombie monster or something maybe yeah a la resident evil it does have that vibe to it maybe yeah. resident evil yeah guns against zombies uh It's it is comical how they get blown in half though. I'll give them yeah. give them credit on a creative death for those guys. Yeah. Even though it's not accurate to a gun, it's it's a nice squishy exploding sound. Too. Yeah, yeah. Oh good, oh good. The level successfully ended. We don't need to replay it because it got stuck. Uh, you know what? If if you're gonna not put the the arrow on screen, that's how levels should always end. Yeah. You know, like don't don't make me walk off. Uh, yeah. Just, just end it. Is this is this another? Are we gonna fight here or? Oh, I thought it was stuck or something. Around. Interesting little narrow bridge. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's a platformer now. Yeah. This reminds mm. me of oh yeah that's Double Dragon three for the Super Nintendo uh, not Super Nintendo eight bit Nintendo. No uh, yeah come on the rest of the way there we go. Nice environment but what are we doing? Yeah. It's I don't know maybe it's a lead up. To, uh, now it's a zombie werewolf. Up. Zombie werewolf is a cool idea. But I why like suddenly? Little... Yeah. Oh there's maybe. multiple of them. Yeah, it definitely felt grounded in this uh, realistic street. Yeah, vigilante stuff. Thing. Yeah. yeah, it's it is strange. Uh, I have a super. I'm gonna use it. All right. It's also a shame they have so much memory to spare. They use the same exact effect for your super, the background of the screen, than when you beat the boss. So I just thought, did did I really beat the boss the first time I used the super that right. early on? See, this guy has this. Yeah. This big... Oh, that's with the X button, I think, right? There's yeah, also both yeah, punch exactly. and uh, there's punch and kick at the same time, but you have to build up your super meter first. There you go. You beat him. That wasn't too hard. No. At least we're back to combat. I, I felt like those guys were a little strange. How they just kept spinning. Yeah. Uh, it was a little. Yeah. Oh no, did you see that? They're just doing these little squidgy stretch animations, which again seems out of place for this game. Like now they're being like playful cartoony. Right, yeah. It's like they're wishy-washy going in these different directions of uh, visual and storytelling sensibility. Realistic, gritty, vigilante, yeah, sci-fi, right. comic. And now we're in uh, an Asian place. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, like that animation. I guess was nearby. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, nearby the crypt or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, now we're in Asia. So that was not a uh, smooth transition, right? Yeah, exactly. Kind of Ooh! Sudden. Yeah. At least we're. A very blobby sumo character. I didn't expect that after the boat, I'll tell you that. Yeah, exactly. The beach was nice. The beach yeah. lead up to that was pretty cool, but... Yeah. I do like the... Uh particle yeah the wind the, or whatever, yeah those fly, those yeah. pretty uh, paper lanterns the lamps uh, blowing in the wind is nice the uh, cherry blossom leaf petals very nice environment again I get the environment artists uh, really oh those statues are fantastic too the, yeah, the bronze yeah. statues mm -hmm. where's the yeah, exploding lots of, thing uh, yeah whoever was responsible for the environment so. great job really really went all out with it and definitely the characters are not bad at all. Um, definitely no, they're, the one, they're not. Yeah. The one I dislike the most by far is the female player character's tiny head. Right. But, 
And you could say that's a stylistic choice, but it has to be consistent with the other human characters in the game. Right, because the other girl enemies... You know, not that bad. Heads, so. Exactly. Yeah, I just make it... Oops, I, I just stole a, a hamburger you could have used again. Sorry about that. It reminds me... It reminds me of like that Beetlejuice scene where. It is. Oh yeah, the shrunken head. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's what that's what she has. She has the Beetlejuice head. So. Exactly. Oh, uh, oh, um, oh no. Back into the game. This. Uh, yeah. I, I like that. You know, we only had to do this one stream session thing though, and it still yeah. it still picks it back up even if we quit the game and all that. Yeah, exactly. You know? right. Oh, I didn't join in. Uh, Oops. Oh. You did. You didn't let me. Uh, you just. Oh, uh, let me see. Do it. Yeah, set up. Hmm. Is there a back? At least I don't think I can join in mid game. There, there you go. go. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm backward. gonna be the girl this time. That's okay. Better. All right. So uh, my kids got here. I had to let them in. I paused the game, and because of the way the menu system is designed in this game, it just I paused, and uh, Corey had been button mashing to fight. So instantaneously, his two button presses while or immediately after I paused allowed him to quit out of the entire game. So luckily it saves progress. So um, we're able to pick back up pretty much where we left off. But uh, yeah, that's definitely, I would consider that a flaw in design. It's way too easy to accidentally quit out. We almost did it once the first time and then we just did it there when my kids got here. Yeah, it, the one easy fix for that would have been making the button that Alternate. something that you're not using to fight most exactly of the time or, something. or make it so you have to press one button to um to choose quit and then a different button to uh authorize the quit to uh, verify that you're quitting the game yeah or just only let the person who paused control exactly there you go uh, there's there's various ways of handling that's probably the, the best easiest and most but... natural yeah agreed yeah I didn't notice that uh, sword sword lady before. You were... nice, nice mixing up the variety of enemies, though. Yeah. Uh, we didn't love the zombies, but uh, yeah. this is this is a much better level, I think. Yeah, and the Popeye hat guy does seem a little comical, but uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, feels like uh, I don't know, village people. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm <laughs> And the sumo guy is... Well, uh, and, and, and yeah. it was strange, too, that he's really only on the boat level, and it's constantly raining there, and the guy's, yeah. like, you know, out there shirtless. And it's like, yeah. okay. It's Village people. A little yeah. weird. <laughs> but, yeah, he's actually in this level, too. So, yeah, like, oh, it, it's, cool. it's especially if you have such a themed character, let him be where he belongs. Don't sprinkle him in the rest of the game, too. Yeah, he he's gonna look out of place. Like who walks yeah. around with a Popeye sailor hat <laughs> right. when they're not like on the boat or serving in that moment in the Marines or wh whoever yeah. wears such a hat? Like that should have been the raincoat guy, you know, like the, yeah, exactly. the boat work guy or whatever. Yeah, he could be in other levels uh, without any trouble other than a boat, a guy yeah. with a raincoat. Well, maybe not raincoat or I don't know, but I know what you. Or mean. like a trench coat, you know. It's what very mean? specific. It would be like the sumo guy being in the zombie level, or yeah. you know. Um, but I'm wondering if we'll see him in other levels yeah, later. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Nice muted out background. Very nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, enough detail to give it depth and interest, exactly. but not not uh, be the distracting portion. Yeah. And an excellent sense of three-dimensional distance into the background because it's so kind of atmospheric out. Yeah, it, it, I like that uh, since they're using real 3D, they, they kind of took advantage and yeah. you know, were able to have areas like this, yeah. which that would be a little tougher to do and with the stuff we're working with, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, these you can just punch out of the way. Easier way to deal with these. Oh, oh. When they're not flaming. Right. 
maybe I spoke to some, yeah. That's the other thing that I uh, always frustrated me in these uh, this genre, is uh, you need to punch either to help your friend or to hit an enemy that's fast approaching you, and instead you pick up a useless item and get yourself punched in the face or what, shot in the face or whatever, because right. the same exact input con uh, is punch or pick something up if you happen to be over it and within range. So I would much rather, like in Metro Siege, you do a different, you uh, hold the attack button and tap down to grab stuff. And that way you well, never it, accidentally grab stuff instead that, of punching. And that's another thing, you yeah. know, this is a modern game meant for modern controllers. You have enough buttons where you can dedicate a button. Yeah, that's very true. You know, you don't even have to make it a trick. A combination, doing. yeah, input combination. Like it could be one of the triggers, or right. you know, I know, I know we got the gun trigger, but this is enough for sure. All right, so what's next? What's not next? <laughs> yeah, the only thing left is ghosts and space aliens, I think. Yeah, vampires or very nice color and light in this level. Okay. All in keeping, overall, it's very much red and green uh, color scheme for this game. Mm -hmm. But they keep it interesting um, and always looks nice. Very good job, environment person, whoever you are. Yeah, I, I, love, I love that back there, sort of window bloom uh, sort of effect going on. And if you go back and look at the first level, he should they should win the, an award for the most realistically rendered uh, trash bags in a game level. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> a lot of uh, full trash bags on the streets in that level, and they look but very no, realistic. But no turkeys. Uh, no, no trash turkey. That's a shame. They, they That's one trope they, they didn't work into. This. That's a good point. So, they got hamburgers, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just no trash turkey. I yeah. can tell that the girl takes more damage. That they made her a little weaker in that regard. Oh, when she gets hit, she does. She yeah, has more damage done to her. It just seems like I run low on life very quick with her, um, and I think that might be the reason. I mean, I, you know, maybe I'm not the best player either, but right. <laughs> he just picked up a point item and said, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it too. Points are pretty darn irrelevant in games like this unless yeah. unless they help you uh, earn one up so you can continue the game easier, like extra lives. Yeah, I've not noticed anything like that though. Yeah. Um, it could be happening and we're just not noticing. Cause that, is, that is definitely the them. best way to handle points. So. Yeah. I always appreciated getting something for it. Yeah. Yeah. Or it Instead would be it interesting. Just... You know how most modern games you like, you have achievements and you unlock stuff? Like if you uh, if you actually if some of the unlockable things were based on being able to earn a certain number of points by the time you beat the game, that could be pretty cool. Like usually it's just like if you beat the game with this character, you earn it, and vice versa. But it could be kind of cool to uh, make yeah. it so that you have to earn certain points to unlock certain things. It is strange that it's a little par. Like it could be. Yeah. I mean, the money and stuff makes sense, but. Yeah. The car is like, that's such a unique item, I suppose. Yeah. That, that, that. I'm a little disappointed in the the military guy's behavior, because he, he behaves kind of like a regular thug, even though he's got the gun. Like, I feel right. like th that was their opportunity to have a guy that tried to keep his distance and pick you off or something, and yeah. he just kind of walks right in. Doesn't he know you're completely helpless in hand-to-hand -hand combat if you're holding a gun? He should keep his distance. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, he's clearly set yeah. up for, for that kind of Long-range combat, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Not to be too hypercritical. We just, mm. uh, we, we love... Uh, yeah, it's just analysis and things that could have been done differently. Uh, yeah, we love exploring these ideas... Uh, yeah. to get inspiration or, you know, uh, yeah. or, or the opposite of inspiration, you know, learning maybe things we wouldn't want to do in a game. You know? Exactly. Uh, still, still very fun romp, though. I, I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying it. 
most of the way. Yeah. I love those dragon statues. Yes. <laughs> she has issues when she gets into a combo. You can't easily turn around. So. Oh, yeah, that's dangerous. Um, I guess maybe it's easier to do when your punches are more delayed or something, but she's fast, and it, it's like controlled. The flip around isn't as responsive. To her right I'm not a fan of the moonwalk either. Why not right. let, you know... Give the character a special hop animation or make them turn around or something. The moonwalk looks weird. Like a bug yeah. or an unfinished feature. And I keep pressing the wrong button. Oh. To he does another spin spinning up. Yeah, that's yeah. Not a fan of that. It Don't seems make like every almost every boss the has a move like that. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's getting repetitive. And that. That's also the same in a lot of the bosses. I'll tell you what, I'll just pull off the old. Good idea. Yeah, it's because that's not the case in most games. It's really easy to forget. You have a omnipresent gun, but you really have to worry about ammo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, like I do enjoy though that you can save it for bosses in yeah. special situations. Definitely. Where... Yeah, the, there's no necess not necessarily a harm in doing things unlike all the other beat 'em up games if it's a right. cool feature or addition or adds more variety or makes your game stand out. Uh, just don't do it for arbitrarily reasons, especially if uh, it doesn't improve the gameplay. I think their ammo limitation is the best way that it doesn't harm the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh, without that, it would definitely be... Just a uh, gun shooting game at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that one level, and and the, yeah. clearly that wasn't nearly... That's fun, fun enough. absolutely. So they, they handled it well enough. It's it's yeah. like a side feature that you don't necessarily need, but yeah, you can. I, I forget I have it most of the time, so that's yeah, very true. But it, it was a neat little. Uh, I would say almost innovation. Of oh yeah, no, they have no yeah. Ammo. Because I'm usually when I play uh, beat 'em up games, I'm player two because that's how I always used to play with my uh, big brother growing up. Like I I find myself looking up at the wrong HUD to uh, gauge whether or not I have uh, right. ammo. Not a yeah, fan of uh, the spin. Yeah, I don't think there's really that many issues with the head. I do think the portraits could have been a little larger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Like that, that maybe that's the issue. Is like you're, yeah. you're not clearly seeing which character is yours or something. But yeah, and that is really kind of an old-fashioned design aesthetic to have them so kind of just floating in the middle of this unnecessary box. The portrait. Yeah, yeah. It's just a perfectly rectangular box frame. Alright, we'll just skip that. This game's long enough there's, without there's, uh, sitting through. Yeah, there's some kind of story uh, yeah. going on. Storytelling's cool, but um, if you can't manage to mostly carry the story uh, in-game and with very short boss intros, um, it's kind of at odds with act in action game you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean save for like if you want a nice intro at the beginning of the game and then like an ending sequence that's totally fine but mid game you're kind of like you're ready to jump into the next set of action you know yeah it's definitely a little too hard most of the time wow. to see the exploding stuff yeah it's like you hear it and you're like where is it it's like a one of those games where you're looking for these tiny things on screen, like hidden, kind of like Where's Waldo, but with items. Right. Where's the deadly explosive device? I can't see it. Well, and those mechs are so big, you know, uh, yeah, there kind is. of blocking a lot of yeah. visual. They even sort of gave the mech a mohawk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mech hawk, we'll call that a mech hawk. Right. Man, it looks like you can't grab mechs. I guess not. Which sort of makes sense, but. Yeah. yeah. 
I always see th these are the kind of mech designs that they bother me because they gave it legs, but it rolls around with its wheels anyway. Yes. So, what's the point of the legs? I guess I, I don't know. <laughs> like I want to see that thing walk. If it's got legs. Uh, that's all there is to it. Yeah. At least if you're not gonna do that, then give it like paint treads or something a little more. Yeah. Grounded. Um, because it's so heavy, you know? Yeah. Nice environment, though. Again, uh, definitely a very big... Yeah. Uh, their aesthetic for the whole game is red-green. Um, and they're definitely keeping with that. But the... Uh, oh, explodey stuff, careful. Ah, uh, wow. Uh, the environment well, is nice. Uh, definitely uh, Streets of Rage 3 and Final Fight both had levels uh, similar to this. Man, I wish I could hit these enemies while they were on the ground. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, the music, the uh, sound effects, the voice acting, the overall polish is very high. I just hope they fix that bug that made us restart the um, that level. Yeah, they admit, like I think people mentioned it was something about enemies getting stuck in walls. Yeah, that's what it seemed something like. like yeah. yeah. So that. So you, they never come on screen. You can't kill them, and therefore the game won't let you progress out yeah. of the level. And the game's not even a, on a timer, so you literally have to quit out of the. You know, oh, oh, did I completely die? Oh, well. see if you can make it through oh, the end wow. of this level. I, I didn't even realize that was. Yeah, it's too easy to not see the explosive. Yep, there's the uh, the the boatman back. Do you ever use your X button super move? I don't know if you have any right now available for you. Um. Oh, uh, uh, continue. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. I don't see a number on the controls. I don't use it that much, but yeah. I noticed it was taking my health. Is that only Oh, is that what it does? Down? Okay. No, yeah, I think the super move is totally different. That's X and Y, uh, or Y and B at the same time, punch and okay. kick at the same time. But the X button, I, th I, I don't know when you have it versus not have it available. Yeah, it makes, it's another, like, I've never liked that. Yeah, uh, stealing health to do a move. Yeah, me neither. Therefore, I never do that move, so yeah. it's just... I can survive longer without it. Um, yeah. In a game where getting through the level means maintaining your health, it's, yeah. it, it always seems contrary to the design. Uh, yeah, th that's why in Metro Siege I made a uh, super meter that you build up by punching the crap out of enemies or just beating enemies any way you want to, and then um, your special kind of super move just uses that meter. It never steals your health to do a move in Metro Right. Stage. Yeah, it's definitely another example of, you know, a tradition a trope, that gets yeah. established uh, with this genre that maybe wasn't always the best idea and exactly. that people kept doing, you know, because yeah. they wanted it to be in the genre. So right. that's happened a lot. Uh, not just with this one. I mean, it's the same is true for kinds of other things yeah. yeah i can't get used to the giant explosions i never have um, right. it's a little too heavy you know they, they didn't yeah. need to be as big if you're gonna put them right. in the game that much it, it's it's a lot <laughs> yeah too damaging yeah there was that exploding device i literally was looking all over couldn't see it until it blew up i mean it, they could have made them you know, flash really bright or something. Uh, yeah. You know, made it obvious that they're there. I think the grenade type things do, like the last second or two before they blow up, but they're relatively small and there's a lot of lights and they can be behind an enemy or something and then you just don't know at all where the thing that's about well, to it, explode is. You know, it's a case like you mentioned with the color palette. Um, yeah. Maybe that's part of the issue is it's got such a high contrast color palette sometimes yeah. which is i mean it looks beautiful but yeah. that will cause those little issues like they could have made them a different color like red 
but there's red all over the place. So, right. you know, uh, maybe blue, but then blue's not going to stand out as much. Uh, and blue's inherently not an alarming yeah. color, like red is. Exactly. It, so they are red, but and they're, um, there's so much red, like you said. Yeah, like even stuff in the background that's red, like these, yeah, you exactly. know, these knobs here, the, the those light orange lights. You know, it's one thing to get defeated to uh, fighting hand to hand, but when you just take an explosion, it doesn't feel. Yeah, it's it, more it frustrating. It doesn't feel like than... you're failing. It feels yeah. like <laughs> you're just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like at that someone, point. It's someone like... brought grenades to the fist fight, kind of thing. You know? Yeah. I at least get I mean, nervous when we reach the level, and then there we go. Enemies, good. <laughs> I don't want to get stuck in another yeah, level. Yeah, one. As far as the explosions go, in terms of the design, I feel like amping it up in some levels wouldn't have been bad if they'd saved it for the end. But it seemed like it started pretty early. All over the place, yeah. Yeah. So, but anyways, that's all. Complain about that. Yeah. Yeah, let, like let certain levels and parts of levels have gameplay themes that switch things up. If you like have the same stuff all over the place all the time, yeah. then things get monotonous a lot quicker. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Um, and monotonous uh, in the the game feels unfair kind of way. Uh, yeah, is is not not good. So apparently there are one-up life items, and I just grabbed one. So, but that's the only one I've ever seen. So. See the mechs explode when they die, and then those yep. those samurai or you know sword wielding sword wielding uh, women girls yeah. also drop grenades. It's I believe the uh, actual word is simmerettes. Right. <laughs> and and clearly, you know, they have the nice. Um, I'm getting stuck on. You weapons. know, they add ha added the feature of even though you have a gun with limited ammo, they have guns in the levels that you can pick up. Yeah. This would have been a great level to oh, put watch a out nice heavy gun, you know, like oh, yeah, I'm yeah. fighting a bunch of explosive mechs and, you yeah. know, but I haven't seen one yet, have you? Like, right, no. Maybe they wanted to add challenge, but this was your chance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's... The boss is now, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a common thing in uh, beat-em-up games or games in general. What was a boss is now just like a sub-boss. Or a tougher thug. Oh, no ammo. Oh. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna supermove him. At least it juggled him. Yep, nice. Alright, that was my fault. I saw the grenade that time. There we go. Nice juggling. Uh, go ahead ah. and get that burger. Oh yeah, the robots explode. They do that in Streets of Rage too. It's, I'm just you not know, paying attention. You couldn't punch the zombies, but you right. can punch the mechs. See, the mechs right. should have been the ones that you have to defeat with a weapon uh, or something. Yeah, they were rare, you know. But... Yeah, I've got to say, from a sound design standpoint, that is the worst thing so far. Is the sound when you punch the robot? It sounds like you're doing no damage, which makes sense. But the very high pitched tink, tink, tink. Yeah. yeah. In almost every video game on the planet, that sound means you're not doing damage. But in this case, yeah. you can smack the hard metal robot with your fist uh, until your fist should be pulp and it'll destroy the robot. Um, but that sound is telling you the opposite, that you're not doing damage. Yeah, true. Like a deeper tongue, tongue, tongue kind of sound. 
would be much more better communication that maybe you're having an effect. Or at least it, it doesn't um, signify in so many games that you're not having an effect. Agreed. So clearly, I guess this is near end of the game. Hopefully. Uh, I mean, not to say I'm not having fun, but... Oh, I know, um, I know. This is long for a beat-em-up, and um, like I said, my kids got here, so I want to uh, spend quality time with them. The old diagonal um, elevator scene. I forget which games have this. I'm pretty certain Streets of Rage 3 does. Have There's a... plenty of old ones. Yeah, a lot of them have yeah. that. Yeah. But they didn't make it, uh, you know, like the old ones where the you're on the elevator the whole time and guys are constantly right dropping down. They, they didn't get as trophy with it. They just made it a little level transition. Juggle, juggle. Ah. Not a fan of his silly idle pose. I want to kill him just for that. <laughs> And I can't hit him when he's down. That's annoying. His role. Go ahead and get that burger. Um, for how for how big that he burger. is, that role he does is super fast too. Yeah. His dodge. He does it faster than she does, and she's supposed to be the fast character. Yeah, I can't even tell it's a door. Look at that. Look at these enemies coming out of there. I would have no idea. Yeah, that is another uh, rule of. In visual design, you know, if there's a door and it's on the side, make sure it's clear that it's a door, you know. Yeah. Mark, Lots of ways yeah. to do that. You can have, like, the floor can be different, like it's a, like a pathway mm -hmm. or carpet or threshold type thing between the, the two areas. Um, giving the door a, an obvious frame, showing the perspective depth of the cutout in the wall to make the doorway. This has none of those. <laughs> No, it's a garage door where you can only see the top very slightly. It could yeah. have been down a little more. Yeah, but it looks closed. Like, oh yeah, now now we could I could see it just a tiny bit that there's floor there, but yeah, it's the same yeah. color. So yeah, yeah it's... it didn't look like an opening. I thought enemies were coming through a wall. spinny guy not a fan of the spinnies it would have been fine if one enemy had that right <laughs> Ugh. yeah not i do not like you spin spin the samurai no and he can do and the it, role it's like so fast do. it looks a little goofy too yeah you know um I might as well like if switch. it was a little more slower, realistic spin or something, it might be kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, Did you see that in the rest of the game? Nobody can block, and then in rage mode, I'm literally blocking with my bare forearms, spinning samurai swords. <laughs> Makes sense. Very pretty again. Environment work. Oh yeah. Uh, nice little touch with the globe back there. Yep. Is this Mrs. Big? Is this the final boss? I... who knows? I'm used to the punch button being the button to continue and instead it's jump to uh, oh. go through the dialogue. Ah. She bec all the bosses have that and become invulnerable when they're doing it. It's annoying. I jumped. Come on, that's a floor-based attack. I jumped at the perfect time. Another thing I noticed they did different in this game is, you know, they put the boss meters right on the boss instead of, like, in the HUD somewhere. Yeah, I don't even notice uh, the boss meters because of that, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you typically you might just want to put that at the bottom or a, yeah. you know it's usually up next to your yeah exactly it appears the boss's portrait and meter appears 
under your meter when you're beating them, or like you said, just the bottom of the screen across the whole bottom is a very effective way for and I a guess boss meter. It's not for every thug, is it? I guess it is. Yeah, for it is. Thug, they did that. That's I, actually yeah, an option. Something the, I, yeah. Okay, something I didn't notice too much while playing, but now yeah. I'm realizing. Maybe we accidentally turned it off in the middle of our button mashing when one person paused and the other person was still thought they were playing. It's possible. But it, it is a menu feature I saw. You can turn on the, the meters being there for the enemies, uh, like over the enemies. Right. But it looks like they're never where they should be, which is under your meter, uh, at least according to every other beat-em-up game. That's one of those things, like I said, don't make an arbitrary change if it's for the worse. Because there's right. too much going on where the combat is. It's uh, right. All those meters being there. Not only does it it's not a, look It's good. another way to not see like a grenade. Exactly. Or, you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, oh, uh, well, I guess that's it. Yeah, we're me. both dead. Darn it. I will continue. And for something so important like continue, it would be nice if they reminded you what button for sure will continue. Right, yeah. Are we going to continue right at the boss fight, or are we going to have to replay the whole level? I don't know. I bet it's the whole level. I have a feeling. It's certainly making you reload everything. Well, uh, no, this is the... Oh, it is the boss fight. Excellent. All right, well, hopefully we'll get her this time, because uh, my this is the first time in a very long time. I think it's because of the button mapping. My thumb is actually hurting. Yeah. All right. Yep. See, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the screen, waiting for the dialogue to go away because I'm pressing the punch button. Right. I don't like it when enemies are arbitrarily invulnerable, standing right there. Mm. At least she's not spinning. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but she is spamming that one thing all too much. Way too much. Like, that should be a desperation thing she does if you are really unfairly hammering on her from both sides or something. Yeah, it feels... But then at least, like, make her flash entirely white or something. Like, she's got some crazy magic force field. Make it make sense that your fists and feet are going right through her. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it makes her... Like, you want you want bosses in these games to be good fighter yeah, exactly. And, and when she's just spamming a power like that, it's... Why is she up there if they're yeah. finally a thug appears? Okay. Like, every single one of the bosses in this game, they have some giant weapon or, like, flamethrower guy. Yeah. And, and, you know, some sometimes that's fine, you know, to mix it up, but, like, we didn't fight, like, a kung fu master at right. that point, Uns you know? Yeah, like, we're being outskilled instead of just right. someone's cheating and using crazy horse, like you said, uh, bringing a grenade to the fist fight. Right. Like, even the, the, you know, the guy in the Asian level, it was like a guy with two big swords, you know, <laughs> yeah. spinning around and stuff it's... with armor on. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, she's. Uh. Uh. Oh, come on, I threw that person cheap, right cheap through. Cheap punch her. move, too. Um. Yeah. Way too many cheap moves. Or not a lot of them, she just spams them. Yeah, I mean, you need bosses to have moves like that, but... <sighs> We're hammering her, and she's just... Doing it in the middle of them. when you've got them in a combo, that's, you know... Yeah. <laughs> wow. Do I have a life? Yeah. Here. Ah, uh, it, didn't, it didn't start us with ammo. Oh, well. Didn't start us with who? Ammo. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I jumped. It really that takes a lot been, of work to build up a super meter, too. It'd be nice if I could... Good, 
uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying it would be nice if I could uh, build up my super meter and have the occasional super move to do against her, but it takes a lot to build up your super meter. Yeah. I was going to say that uh, that would have been great language for the marketing of this game, is, you know, explosive gameplay. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so. Oh, what? The Z order issue. It's not Z order, but Z. Z depth, yeah. Depth. Uh, Z collision, whatever uh, you want to call it. Dead again. Oh, finally. Stage seven complete. Please be the end of the game. Just for my thumb's sake. She looks like a final boss. Uh, yeah, she behaved like one. one she sure. clearly wants to take over the world. Oops. Um you yeah. know. Sorry everyone about the mouse pointer over the screen, but um Uh oh. It's acting like she might have a second form. Hopefully not for my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spare or kill her. What shall we do? Ah, uh, spare. Flip a coin. Let, uh, okay, so let her learn her lesson. Uh, oh, you have to hold the direction. I'm sure she's gonna do the old old movie thing and try to draw yeah. a gun. They just wanted to spare her to interrogate. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, sparing her made the game longer. 1972, that might be... Uh, Surely might not. Remember the actual number. Surely, if, so if you killed her... like The game would end, think... probably. And then that person would be dead. We wouldn't find them or something. Possibly. I don't know. Maybe this is one of the, like we talked about, like a branching path. You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, what should be the end of the game. All right. <laughs> I feel like it would be bad now if I skipped this since we made a choice. We need to see what this choice leads yeah. to, but at the same time, I'm like, come on, either, either there's more gameplay or not. I know. And a lot of this attitude just comes from the fact that I'm old, I'm a parent, I don't have time in an action right. game to also watch a movie at the same time. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and, and that's another thing, too. Like, maybe, I guess, if you were playing single player, you might be a little more compelled to sit and watch the story. Yeah, but exactly. When, when you're playing with a friend, this kind of game cooperatively, yeah, you kind of... You want to chat and pound buttons and beat you know, people up. You yeah. don't want to uh, pay attention to a whole bunch of dialogue. It is quite a lot, actually. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're big fans, especially in these types of games, of uh, telling a lot of story with very little. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, Trying to make it all really your points across with like. During the gameplay and just like a super quick introduction of the boss, have him say something that carries the plot. Yeah. Man, this is a long cinematic. And now, oh, and we get an elevator. Okay. See, that's where this should have picked up. It shouldn't have had that whole diatribe. Yeah. Look at her nose there, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> More happening. You blew up the oil rig? It almost makes me feel like this game was originally planned to just be a motion comic, and then they're like, hey, why don't we tag some gameplay onto it? <laughs> right. Doing and again, I'm just an old crotchety man with <laughs> not a lot of time. I understand this, this has value maybe, if you have a lot of time to enjoy it. Maybe this is the ending, it. and that's why it's so long. Maybe because it looks like the rest. Yeah, 
this yeah. kid. My thumb is hoping it's just the ending, and at some point this movie, this epic film, will end. It's a long ending, that's for sure. Uh, so I guess letting her live lets yeah. her blow up. Yeah, but at least you rescued because she told you where... If she's going to blow up the ship, why tell you where she is? Maybe her letting her live just made the end cut scene way longer so she could tell her story. And that's Yeah, it. I don't know, I guess. But see, so, like, see how you rescued this girl? The yeah. reason she did is because you let her live. So she was able, you could interrogate her and she told you what where she was. Right. So I'm assuming that's the case. I'm assuming you get the best ending by letting her live. That's just right. a guess. Because she dies anyways, right? She blows up the whole... I guess. Sort of you know, but that's how they do the sequel, well, you know. Did you really see her die? Maybe she jumped out off of the right, right. Who knows? All right, so yeah, this was an ending. There was no additional gameplay. Yep, there we go. But there you go. You got to see it all. Spoiler alert too late. <laughs> a retroactive spoiler alert. There's the ending. Cool. All right, so there was a the game. Definitely uh, quite high quality. If they fix that one bug that might only happen during uh, co-op play, then... Yeah. Uh, pretty darn solid the only other thing that zombie shooting level if the, all you could do is shoot why force you to hold the right I, trigger I feel, button i feel that considering the length of the game yeah like that could have been entirely skipped like just yeah exactly cut that out cut that yeah. portion out but or if you really yeah. want to add it for varied gameplay either make it a, a branch level that you can get to but don't always need to yeah, like or, a bonus level, uh, optional yeah. bonus level. Or Let people yeah, kick it, and ram yeah. when they're holding a gun. There's absolutely no reason to cripple the rest of their body just because they're holding a gun. That just made the game play. And I couldn't throw it to get rid of it to get back to hand-to-hand -hand combat. That It felt like that. It was so unfinished. It felt so unfinished. It felt buggy. It may even well, be it, buggy, and it, I'm not sure. It, it, even if they, they had that nice environment... Yeah. Make most of it regular combat. Yeah, exactly. Make the zombie shooting a short sequence within. Exactly. All. Like that, you like, pick up the guns, you yeah. do that for a minute, and yeah. then you're on to the combat. And know? just force the guns. And, yeah. Make the players pick them up, and then make the players get rid of them once you're done with that part. Yep. Yep. But anyway, overall, the, the quality is very good. It, it does offer fun. I'm sure we'd have even more fun uh, if we both had more practice with the game. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, when I edit the video, if there's any way to hit characters when, when they are down, I'll note that. I hope there is, because the game would be a lot more fun if that were the case. Um, but anyway, uh, that will be it for this video, and uh, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description, and we'll see you soon.